I think this is the time I wish I was actually an anime only watcher because my heart hurts after watching this episode. Oh, it hurts so fucking bad. It really, really does. Oh my god, this episode. And light novel readers know what I'm talking about. They know exactly what I'm talking about this episode. Damn. Okay, so let's talk about this episode. This episode of Sword Art Online Season 2. With this episode, the end game goal has been reached. The Sleeping Knights have accomplished their goal and they have beat a dungeon floor boss and they have gotten their name on the Memorial Stone plaque, in which is very awesome because they actually accomplished their goal in a couple episodes. And honestly, that's great work for what they managed to do with what they had as a party. And to see how they actually got their names on the plaque, it's a huge accomplishment. But in this episode, there is subtle setup and subtle signs of drama building up in this episode. It's very, very obvious, even for an anime-only watcher, especially with the way the episode ended off on, it's obvious drama is starting to build up. In which, in turn, this is where I said that, you know, Mother Rosario's arc is a lot different than the other arcs of SAO. And out of all the arcs of SAO, Mother Rosario is the most different and original. And that's why I love this arc so much. One of my personal favorites, to be honest. But, I will tell you this. This episode did a damn good job with its subtle little foreshadowings done in this episode. They did a damn good job. You anime-only watchers won't realize it until after you get to a certain point in this arc. But I'll tell you what, they did a damn good job for what they did. Not giving it away so easy, but they did a good job. Another thing, too, with this episode is... Kirito. Even with a two-minute scene in this episode, or even less than that, probably even a minute and a half scene, or even less, even a minute, he still, when he was in this episode, he's a fucking badass. Like, seriously, th this arc is not even centered around Kirito, but he comes in, and he just starts wrecking face, and you have freaking Klein come in, too, and starting to wreck face also with Kirito. Just epic. Just fucking epic. Oh my god, it just, wow. To see how you have the flames around Kirito and all that, and he like puts around, he puts like the peace symbol up at Asuna, that was epic. That was fucking epic. I really, really love that scene in this episode. And, you know, honestly, this is like one of the few scenes you will see Kirito in this arc. And just seeing how his spotlight in this arc was just so beast. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. Another thing, too, about this episode is the overall aspect with Asuna wanting to join the Sleeping Knots. Since the in-game goal has been reached, the Sleeping Knots have accomplished their goal, and they have made their names on the Stone Memorial, pretty much they have no reason to technically go for, you know, any more floor bosses since they have finally accomplished it. But with this entire event, Asuna asks to join the Sleeping Knights, and the Sleeping Knights say they will be disbanding before spring, around spring or before spring. They will be disbanding as a group, and they will not be able to play much anymore at all. And so this leads to where Asuna is kind of getting rejected in this episode, but you can clearly see there's something else going on in the background behind this, but we do not know exactly what this is. But one thing I will say, though, the way they use these scenes, the way the drama was handled personally, I think they did a damn good job, especially with the music choice. The music choice definitely helped out these scenes. Now, honestly, one thing I will say is the animation of this episode, there were some scenes that wasn't the best when it came down to the talking scenes, like a far off distance talking scenes. The animation wasn't the best, but when it came to the fighting scenes, however, that's when the animation jumped up in quality. I love that animation, especially when you saw Yuki jump at the raid boss. And you just see like, ah, you know, stabbing the freaking raid boss two-headed troll dude. That was badass. Oh, damn. That freaking animation with her face is just epic. It kind of reminded me of uh, Kirito when he went, you know, rage mode against the goat demon. You remember that? Like the bluish goat demon from SAO1? That entire scene with Yuki, that's exactly what that reminded me of when you saw her rush in. And to see how it was defeated like that is pretty crazy. Now, one thing I will tell you from this episode is that this episode was mainly just a setup. It clearly was a setup episode. Even though it accomplished the end game goal, majority of this episode was setup. So I know for a fact a lot of anime only watchers are going to be questioning what is next. What is going to happen next? Uh, you're going to have to see because it's going to get pretty badass from this point onward. I want to say it right now. But overall, tell me your thoughts about this episode of SAO Season 2. Anime only watchers, how do you feel about this arc so far? I mean, did you think the in-game goal had already been accomplished this early in 
this arc. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I think we have about three more episodes left. I think there's going to be a total of 24 episodes. I think we have just three, three episodes left. So what do you think is going to happen in those three episodes, Anime Only Watchers? I'm curious to see what kind of theories you all have. Also, light novel readers, does your heart hurt as much as me? Let me know. Because just, yeah, <laughs> it fucking hurts. Damn. So tell me your thoughts. Love you all so much. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.